Hey everybody, Jennifer Schaus here coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. And thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Uh, our series happens every Wednesday at 12 o'clock. All of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. If you're looking for the PowerPoint, uh, you can find it later this afternoon or at least by tomorrow morning over on the slideshare.net site. Uh, if you sign up for uh, to follow our YouTube channel, it doesn't cost anything, you'll be notified when the webinar is uploaded. We have, as you can see, over 600 uh, government contracting webinars on the YouTube channel. Uh, a quick blurb about us, we are based in downtown Washington, D.C., and work with established revenue generating government contractors. Our primary focus is on GSA schedules, but we also provide other services that are listed there on the screen. You can find more information about our services on our website, which is listed there on the screen. Okay, in the event you were selling services to federal contractors, we have advertising uh, options available to you. We've got a newsletter that goes out every Monday, reaching over 25,000 subscribers, most of which are federal contractors. Uh, so we have advertising space there. Uh, we also have over 27,000 LinkedIn followers. Um, so you've got opportunities to advertise in the newsletter, in this webinar series, you can put on your own webinar with us. Uh, and we can post your uh, events, conferences, webinars, um, more information about your services through our LinkedIn. So if you want any information about that, uh, shoot us an email to the hello at jennifershouse.com. We'll send over our media kit and any specials that we are running uh, at that time period. Okay, some notes on uh, some upcoming events and specialty webinars. Um, these are webinars that we are putting on with the Virginia PTAC. Um, they're obviously a little bit uh, further out, uh, Thursday, August 23rd and Thursday, February 15th of next year. Uh, we're covering Marketing 101, so just the basics. And uh, then we'll cover the GSA schedule on Thursday, June 15th, and then again, uh, September 14th. These are all complimentary webinars. You can just sign up on the Virginia PTAC site. We also have them listed on our website under events, even though these are webinars and not in person. We've got a complimentary coming up with our friends over at MyGovWatch. Uh, they're gonna be discussing uh, how solicitations sometimes have the wrong NAICS codes assigned to them. So you wanna make sure that you attend this, again, free webinar Friday, June 9th. Uh, the link is there. It should also be on our website. And this will uh, educate you on how to find opportunities in SAM.gov to make sure that you're not missing any uh, opportunities that have wrongly assigned NICS codes or that when you are looking at solicitations that they are in fact uh, geared towards your business. There's a great event uh, coming up on this coming Monday. It's a matchmaking event put on by the Virginia PTAC. Uh, the confirmed, and this is, uh, I think there's been a couple more that have been added to this list. These are the matchmaking companies, it includes everything from Boeing to the uh, NASA small business programs, as well as DOD, uh, Department of Education, the VA. So you're going to see a lot of um, uh, big name agencies and departments, as well as um, great companies, uh, Boeing, Dun & Bradstreet, General Dynamics, KPMG. Um, the registration link is there at the top. Uh, you can also find it on the Virginia PTAC uh, website. Our quarterly event, which is two hours of networking over at the Kennedy Center, is going to take place on Monday, July 17th. We expect anywhere from two to 300 federal government contractors. Uh, the link to sign up is there at the bottom of the screen. It's also on our website under the event section. These are the uh, sponsors as well as the government um, confirmed departments. So SBA, the VA, Department of Ed, uh, DOD's National Guard. We want to thank Federal Compass as well as GovForce for being sponsors in this event. Again, the registration link is on our website, meaning jennifershouse.com, and just navigate over to the event section. Okay, our webinar series are complimentary thanks to our sponsors. So this is the reason that you don't have to pay. Um, Gov Events and uh, Fairfax County, as well as Set Aside Alert, all have graciously posted our events in the past. 
um, and they do so in the um, they all have calendars where uh, where our events are posted. Uh, Gov Events also has a repository of past events. So if you're looking for any of um, any of our past webinars, you can also go there to find them. Um, Tom Johnson over at Set Aside Alert, they are the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small women-owned and veteran-owned hub zone and 8A firms. Visit Set Aside Alert for more information. Uh, their publication also posts our webinars. Uh, the Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. Uh, GovSpend FedMine, the contracting data in our 2023 webinar series is provided by GovSpend and FedMine. Uh, they are the leading trusted source of data, analytics, and insight for government contractors. They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places key data points at your fingertips. The platform now provides contract opportunities within thousands of entities at federal, state, local, and education organizations. With the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, the combined GovSpend FedMine solution empowers teams to make smarter decisions. Thank you to GovSpend and FedMine for providing the data in the webinar series this year and previous years. The Virginia PTAC, um, soon to be called Virginia PTAC, or I'm sorry, um, APAX Accelerators. Uh, the Virginia PTAC at George Mason University offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on your business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling, however, is limited to eligible client companies. Uh, the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce has a monthly government contracting council meeting where you can network with peers, learn about upcoming events and opportunities, and help shape future programming. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. at the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. The next event meeting will be on May 23rd. If you have questions, you can contact Alicia Field. Her email address is there at the bottom. Uh, for June, their event, uh, their meeting will be on June 27th. Bidspeed, you want help winning government contracts. Bidspeed helps and you win. Find opportunities from every federal, state, and local public source in the U.S. Bidspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal template. Bidspeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at bidspeed.com. The Federal Business Council uh, events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FPC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. <clears throat> this includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and off-site meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Uh, Gov events. Looking for relevant government events where you can connect with community? Sign up for your free membership on govevents.com to find your latest events that matter to you near you. Conferences, trade shows, virtual events, webinars, and networking opp opportunities are available at your fingertips. Plus, explore upcoming sponsorship opportunities. You can even access on-demand events so you can stay on top of the latest trends and best practices in the industry. And you can post your own events for free to further expand your reach. All of this and more with your free Gov Events membership. Okay, now we will dig into the actual content and a little bit about the series and the schedule. Uh, as mentioned, all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you'll be alerted anytime we upload new content. It does not cost you anything. 
the slideshare.net site is where we um, host all of our PowerPoints. So if you want to download any, uh, just hop over to SlideShare. We've got over 600 webinars on our YouTube channel. Uh, and obviously these are all being added every Wednesday. So everything in red is what we've completed. Where we are today is uh, covering Humana on Wednesday, May 17th. Next week is uh, Sandia National Labs. We will close out the season uh, with GlaxoSmithKline on November 15th. We will skip uh, the week of 4th of July. Uh, other than that, uh, this is the schedule. They are all listed on our website under the top 40 webinars. Okay, we're assuming that most people are attending this series so that they can learn about subcontracting opportunities with these large businesses who hold the uh, 40 largest or have the revenue with the federal government uh, combined for the last uh, five fiscal years that have the the most revenue. So uh, something to know about subcontracting. Obviously, you want to be familiar with the FAR and the DFARS, which are the rules that the government must abide by when awarding contracts. So FAR Part 44 covers subcontracting policies and procedures. We've covered this in a webinar back in 2020. It would be in your best interest to be familiar with this if you do plan on being a subcontractor to uh, the company we're featuring today, Humana, or any company at all. If you are doing any work uh, as a subcontractor in any of the DOD uh, agencies, then you want to be also aware. So in addition to the FAR, you also want to be cognizant of the DFARS. Uh, we covered those in 2021. Um, so please take a look at the DFARS Part 44. We did kick off the season with subcontracting with the primes. There were six sessions to that uh, webinar covering the topics that you see there. Um, we've also covered subcontracting within all 15 federal departments. Those are listed there on our website as well as YouTube. And over the last couple of years, we have covered more of the tactical and strategic topics on subcontracting. Uh, the link there at the bottom of your screen will get you to those webinars. Okay, some best practices um, are first and foremost to focus on what you do and do it well. Be known as the person that provides that specific uh, solution, whether it's a product or a service. So uh, focus primarily on that. Do not try to be everything to everybody. When you are looking for solicitations, make sure that you're narrowing them down to where you're actually adding value. And that can be defined as having a um, special skill set, a lower price, uh, perhaps a relationship within an agency where you've got past performance. And then you also want to uh, take some time and this will, uh, the time that you expend upfront will be very useful and make your, uh, your focus more targeted. So when you're looking at primes, you shouldn't focus on a prime whose name you know. It should be narrowed down through reverse engineering by using the data on SAM, USA Spending, FPDS, or if you're using any paid aggregators to find where is their overlap where you are providing a complementary skill set, where you are both doing work within a specific department um, or complementary agencies or complementary departments. Uh, there is so much uh, information that's out there. So whether you're uh, using Google to sign up for alerts for that company uh, or and or the department and agency, uh, that would be in your best interest and that should be something that you should be focused on. You should also have a uh, kind of a vanilla flavored capability statement, but then also a very specific one that is focused on the solicitation, that particular RFP, and highlights where you're adding value uh, that will be uh, help, very helpful to this potential partner, meaning the prime where you could be a subcontractor. Once you've got all of your ducks in a row, and this will take, that will take you some time if you're doing it properly, uh, then the digital execution comes into play. So you then want to register on their website as a small business vendor, sign up for the events that this company is attending, look at the associations that they belong to, join those associations, get on membership committees or, or any committee, connect with them on LinkedIn. You wanna be looking for the small business liaison officers, uh, SBLOs as they're commonly referred to, 
as well as the program managers. The SPLOs, you need to come to them with your homework. Don't ask them to do what's listed here in one through six because they're gonna ask you to do that. So once you contact that SBLO, you should have registered already on their website as a vendor. Uh, you should know who the program manager is that's overseeing the program that um, is implemented there at a particular agency that's perhaps coming up for recompete or renewal. Okay, so today we are focused on Humana. Some basic information, the company website, which is pretty obvious. Uh, their stock price, they are publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Ticker is HUM. Uh, they've seen some fluctuation. Uh, things are looking pretty good now if you go back uh, through, uh, looks like we went back to 2018. This is coming from Yahoo. Uh, obviously a, a small drop or a fairly big drop back in 2020 due to the tam pandemic, but things have really skyrocketed since then. This is just something to be cognizant of. It can help in your discussions. Um, you want to know what uh, contributed to the increase or decrease uh, in their stock price, uh, particularly based on their federal government business. If you want to register as a small business on the main Humana website, um, you've got two links there. It's the supplier portal and then reading up on their supplier diversity can be very helpful. Okay, uh, a lot of these companies um, that we're featuring in the top 40 are very large for obvious reasons, and they're going to have subsidiaries and sister companies. So it's important to know that the UEI number, which is their identifier in SAM.gov, it's listed here. And they've got the humana.government.com website. <clears throat> okay, their LinkedIn information. Um, they are based out of Kentucky, uh, a little bit over 40,000 employees. Uh, the, here are their SBLOs. Um, one obviously is uh, retired, but um, uh, so just keep an eye on uh, who you're connecting with and make sure that when you do connect with SBLOs that you do have a specific reason, you have a solicitation in mind, don't ask them to do your homework. Okay, on the civilian side, they've got no uh, contracts uh, reported. On the defense side, which is where all of their work lies, is with Department of Defense uh, and some dollars as well with the Army. If you look at the grand totals, everything has seen a significant increase. Um, so I'm just looking at the gray bar there at the bottom. And if you look at 2023, they are well on their way probably to surpassing uh, their 2022 numbers, especially considering that DOD numbers experience typically a three-month delay in reporting. Um, but everything has shown here to, uh, to be increasing, uh, which is good news for Humana. There are no uh, contracts reported on the uh, independent agencies. Their top five NICS goes, it's pretty uh, simple here for Humana, they're an uh, insurance company, and so that is primarily what they are providing. If you look at the um, chart here on the far left, they are providing direct health and medical insurance um, year over year, and it, it works kind of left to right here if we go chronologically. Uh, 2019 saw a nice increase. Uh, 19 to 20, a little bit of an increase, not as big as what happened 18 to 19. 2021, um, a smidgen as well. Uh, 2022 is, um, has seen a, a significant increase and 2023 is off to, I think, a, a very strong uh, start considering again that we're uh, six, seven or more than seven months into the fiscal year. And again, this is a three month delay, so you're really only looking at about four months there of reporting. Uh, this is that same chart broken out in dollars. Um, so again, you see uh, that everything, the numbers are indicating significant increases uh, from the uh, last several fiscal years. Again, the reason we went back to 2018 um, is to not um, to look at a fuller picture because 2020 obviously was a unique year for the pandemic that kind of bled into fiscal year 2021 as well. Um, but it looks like they have weathered the storm, they were in the right business, and um, business appears to be good for them in the federal sector. 
um, contracts with a sub K requirement on civilian are going to be none because there were no civilian contracts. Pretty simple. On the defense side, uh, we do have the uh, DOD and then DHA, which is where uh, a good chunk of their work is. Uh, obviously, those numbers are also uh, increasing uh, across the board. Looks like there was a, a blip on the radar there with the Army back in 2019. Um, and I shouldn't call it a blip because it's um, uh, 2.1 uh, that added, obviously, to their, their revenues. Okay, independent agencies, there, was, there were no contracts there, so subcontracting um, dollars are obviously going to be uh, nil as well. Okay, so let's look at the actual subcontracts that were awarded by Humana, by agency, this is Department of Defense. Uh, if you've been with us for the last 14 webinars, um, you'll see that this slide is very different from the others that we've looked at. Um, and if we look at the industry, it's obviously the medical insurance carriers, um, same dollars that we looked at in the last slide, the 47.63 million. Okay, so the contracts to the subcontractors, um, and it looks like they do work with some subcontractors that we'll look at in more detail uh, later. So you've got uh, Wisconsin Physician Service Insurance um, getting the bulk of the award, and that is due to a uh, contract that they went after uh, for DOD work that covers not just the east, but um, the western part of the U.S. as well and central. Uh, some other companies here, uh, Rethink Autism, we're gonna, uh, which is the third one down, has a, a nice chunk of change as well. Um, and that is a for-profit, as you can see, Rethink Autism Incorporated, not uh, .org or um, uh, not a uh, nonprofit. Um, so if this is kind of your uh, where your sweet spot is in healthcare and insurance, uh, you probably want to dig a little bit further into these companies to find out uh, what type of work they are doing. And at the very bottom, you've got a, a software company that pops up. Uh, be curious to learn a little bit more about them and uh, do they have a healthcare uh, focus? Or are these guys doing any other work with the government? Um, and if so, in what departments and agencies? Okay, the top five subcontracts reported uh, as we um, basically just drill down a little further from the last slide. We've got Rethink Autism Incorporated there at the top. The Wisconsin Physicians gets. Um, four kind of slots here in the in the top um, uh, contracts that we're looking at and then this info systems public services um, who is functioning as uh, direct health and medical insurance carrier so these all have uh, a decent amount of money next to them again i would dig in a little bit further to um, to learn a little bit more about what they are all doing <clears throat> For GWACs, uh, there were none that were reported, so um, typically insurance services will not be on a government-wide acquisition contract. Um, and now we'll look at any expiring contracts that are valued at uh, $750 and above. The reason we chose $750 is because that's the threshold for subcontracting. And here we've got um, the top 10 agencies. Again, we looked at that. That was Department of Defense. Um, the top 10 states where they show uh, Kentucky, which is where the business is headquartered, um, and then Humana um, Government Services, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Humana, um, shows up there. Okay, we've got some conclusions here. Um, they're a large business, but a uh, pretty narrow focus. Uh, obviously, with DOD, should that contract or the work that they have um, with DOD go elsewhere, uh, I'm sure that would very negatively impact the business. So the company dates back to 1961, um, was founded by a gentleman by the name of Wendell Cherry in Kentucky, where the company is still headquartered. Uh, the company actually started out uh, running a nursing home and then they acquired additional nursing homes they became the largest uh, nursing home company in the U.S. That was 1961. In 1972, uh, they sold the business to purchase hospitals. And then they did a, a name change. Um, so the company actually started out uh, with the name Extendicare. Um, 
they switched the they changed the company name in 1974 to Humana to provide a, a softer kind of name um, for that industry. Um, and then in the 80s is when they got into the health insurance business. Um, Bruce uh, Broussard listed here is the president and CEO at Humana. So he's the, the head honcho. He is obviously on LinkedIn. He's been with the company for um, quite some time, you know, almost uh, 12 years. And then he's got a um, previous work experience in the medical and healthcare uh, sector. Uh, so as noted, Humana Military is the wholly owned subsidiary of Humana. Uh, they administer the TRICARE Health Program for the East Region, but um, as we mentioned that um, the bottom right here, Humana to acquire a Wisconsin managed healthcare plan. In Clusa, we saw a Wisconsin uh, company show up as one of the subcontractors, so I'm sure that there is some sort of dotted line or link there. Um, Medicare uh, Advantage, obviously Humana uh, plays a role there, um, and they are appearing to be a more profitable company as medical costs drop in government plans. Now, if we actually look at the subsidiary, which is probably more relevant to, um, to government contractors that want to be a sub uh, or find some way to work with Humana on the TRICARE program or on any other contracts that they may have, uh, I would direct you to the humanamilitary.com, and then they have a small business sector um, or section where you can then um, get listed in their, uh, in their, we'll say, small business database. So um, they're obviously looking for small disadvantaged women-owned, veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned, uh, hub zone uh, businesses as listed there. You've got the website there at the top. Um, and again, I think this is going to be more valuable than uh, the subcontractor on the um, just the regular humana.com site. Uh, here's some history about how they got into the uh, the TRICARE business. It, um, Genesis goes back to 1993. Um, they lost that contract in 20, 2009 to uh, basically United Healthcare, I'm sorry, United Health Group uh, to one of their subsidiaries. They protested, they did not win. Back in 2011, they then regained uh, the five-year contract. It's obviously worth uh, a decent amount of money. And then um, this past December, so the end of last year, um, they also were awarded the managed care again for the TRICARE East region, uh, and that is Humana Military. So again, I would direct you to the humanamilitary.com site um, to focus on any of the government contracting work uh, for Humana. Okay, so we talked about Bruce uh, Berthard being the CEO of the main, uh, the parent company, Humana, uh, but the person you're probably more interested in that would be more relevant is Karen Moran. She's the president of Humana Military. She is on LinkedIn. Um, and she was uh, recently appointed uh, president at Humana Military. Um, and you've got some information there as well about her. Um, here's a statement here um, just from a couple of months ago, end of January of this year from, business, from uh, Yahoo Finance, from their business wire, um, stating that Karen Moran is, um, is now taking uh, the lead here, she's the first woman to hold the role in the 26 year history. The gentleman that was there before her, uh, Brent Densford, he had been in that role for more than 32 years. So uh, obviously a big change for them. You've got a quote at the bottom from Sue Schick. She's the, or was the segment president uh, group and military business. So I was curious to see if she, where she was and um, and I thought she would be a good contact and information to provide, but it looks like she, shortly after this announcement at the end of January, moved on to a company by the name of Zealous, uh, which is in the healthcare finance uh, sector. So uh, obviously Sue is no longer relevant, but uh, the point is that as you read through these articles, you can pull out names that may be relevant to you. And I think it's important then uh, to kind of sleuth them a little bit, to dig in a little bit further to find out can that person be helpful to you? 
obviously um, Sue is not going to be helpful since she is no longer at Humana and from what I could tell Zealous is not doing much in the um, government sector uh, but that was just a, a probably about a 30 second um, uh, search to uh, to look for them uh, so it's possible I may have missed something uh, it would be important to see who has replaced Sue as the um, as the president for group and military business at Humana, uh, because that person probably knows the inner workings of the um, the government business, which is uh, this Tricare program and military business for Humana. Uh, if you're not familiar with Tricare, uh, we've provided the website here. Obviously, this is the uh, military insurance um, site. And uh, that all runs through uh, DHA, Defense Health Agency. Um, and you can find some information here. They are uh, friendly to small businesses. And you've got some links there kind of in the center of the screen about procurement and small business. Um, and this is just, again, a quick snapshot. Um, on the far right, you've got some vendor presentations uh, that may be helpful to you. Uh, particularly, uh, we always end up with a lot of IT companies on our calls so looking at the uh, vendor presentations the second one down health IT vendor engagement that may be useful to take a look at again that's on the health.mil uh, website for DHA and that's all we've got for Humana uh, again today's webinar will be on our YouTube channel later this uh, afternoon or at least by tomorrow morning the slides will be on SlideShare as well um, next week we're covering, covering Sandia National Labs um, we'll close out the season with GlaxoSmithKline. Again, we will skip the week of 4th of July. Uh, we hope that you also join us July 17th for our Government Contractors Networking event at the Kennedy Center. Two to 300 federal contractors um, will be present. There are opportunities to sponsor the event, uh, and we do hope to see you there. So thanks again for participating, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you.